What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay, my journey to 10,000 live listings. This is our Monday Night Mastermind where we discuss ideas together and update our goals. Things have been a little bit crazy, but today I want to focus on talking about hard goods and selling stuff other than clothing um, and just how we are going to go approaching that. Some of us, like Kevin, maybe he only sells shoes, for example, but how would he approach getting into a new niche if he wants to or if he's even interested in something like that? Um, just we're just brainstorming ideas because a lot of people want to sell different things and there are people that also um, haven't sold um, yet and they're just starting. So let's go into, let's start with just wins. What went well this week and what was a challenge? Uh, Holly, do you want to start? Sure. Um, I had, so my favorite win, um, my favorite wins are always going to be things that sold that were in more of like the vintage random category because that's where my love is. So um, a vintage trench coat by The Fox, which had no comps, and I've had for a year with this beautiful um, interior, like an Hermes scarf silk interior sold for like 88, and then it was almost 100 after shipping. So that's a win because, I mean, it's a good price, but to me, like, it's going to a home, it'll be appreciated. Um, a challenge has been, I, I'm... I'm always struggling with myself, scheduling myself, and getting things done on a schedule. But panel that I work on, like putting different solutions in place, and yeah, it gets better every week. Oh, we can't hear you, Chris. You're on mute. Sorry, You're on mute. Laura. How is how is the week? Um, I've had a lot of stuff going on. I'm actually in South Carolina right now visiting family. Um, but I, um, put my, all my items in my store on three day shipping and my sales haven't even slowed down. So I don't know if that's a win or what, because I can't be there to ship them right away. Um, so I'm probably going to be sending a bunch of emails, um, tonight after this call, just letting my customers know, like, I won't be able to be back there to ship it until Wednesday. Um, but so I guess that is a win <laughs> that I put everything on three day handling time and I still got a, quite a bit of sales. Um, but I know I'm going to have a ton of shipping when I get home. So I'm just, just motivating, trying to like get wrap my head around the shipping when I get home. Yeah, I think that's something that's important to realize. If you do put your store on vacation mode or you don't have to or extend your handling time and you message your buyers letting them know, usually it's not an issue. Um, I mean, we've had lots of people on Instagram saying they're gone for two weeks or five days or 10 days and they let their customers know and they don't lose it. They don't skip a beat. Um, yeah, and I, um, and I listed a bunch before I left. Um, so I actually still am around that thousand mark um, for my active listings. So I think that helped like push my sales even over the weekend while I wasn't listing. Um, so that's a good thing as well. Cool. Um, Sam, why don't you tell us how did the week go? You got a new microphone? Uh, so, uh, the, the week was pretty good. Uh, I'm actually, okay, okay, let me just talk about the positive part. Uh, so I was able to move all of my inventory from my listing room to just different place where I, have, where I store all the items. So I was able to move everything out of that place and make space for, so I can have more, more people listing now. And uh, we are getting wholesale accounts. They're coming in pretty well. I was able to find really good uh, Amazon, uh, you know, uh, products. So that's pretty good. And uh, so the week has been a bit hard because now actually school starts to get harder and harder. And now last week was pretty much test week. So I had to study. I wasn't able to get on like no social media. I was just getting on there for like once in a while, but everything is going pretty well. Uh, and my sales number, they're doing well as well for this, the account that we're doing on this channel. Uh, I wasn't able to post a lot of items, but at the same time it's still growing because of the, the stuff we posted weeks back. So overall it's pretty good. All right, Kevin. Good. Um, I was able to get a ton of sourcing done, so I was excited about that. Um, really on track with uh, just working out and meal prepping today. That's what I've been working on. Um, 
actually today I think I listed six thousand dollars worth of stuff. So that was that was good. I have a bunch of stuff sitting downstairs that I just have to draft. I changed how I'm sourcing so that now um, just for time restraint, um, I'm only picking up things that I can get multiples of five or more. Um, and that's really saving me a lot of time. I'm still picking up the same number of things. I just have to work a little bit harder, um, to find the right stuff. Um, and I've been more on a regulated schedule with my day to day job. So I've had off, um, you know, a consistent two days a week. And what I've, what I've, been doing that's worked for me is the first day um, during the weekday I go to stores and I basically just get um, an idea of what they have and I jot down some things on my phone and then I do a lot of research later that night and throughout the rest of the week and I strategize communicate with the employees in the store find out exact quantities um, and then I just get prepared for you know what's going to be where and um, I pick up everything as much as I can the first day of the sale. And then the rest of the weekend I'm, I'm sending people to get it. Um, so that's been good. It's been hard trying to communicate while I'm at work, but, um, besides that, uh, trying to think everything else is going good. Um, I started listing with, uh, my, my new camera. I think that that's helping. Um, I was surprised by that result. I didn't think that that would be a thing, but I definitely see sales conversion going up with a, with a better camera. I, I think it's, I think it's because of what I sell. Cause I, I mean, there's so many people that, that don't do that. And there's so many people that have way bigger stores than I do and still use their smartphone. So I, I don't know, but it's worked out. So I'm not, I'm not mad. Um, besides that, everything's going great. On that same point, I started um, selling books, which I haven't done ever. And I upload an actual picture of the book and price the same price as everyone else. And mine's been selling first. So I wonder, I do think that that may make a difference. If they're all the same, you might pick one with an actual photo because it makes sure. them believe you. Cause, and especially in the shoe category where a lot of people use stock photos and right. it's a little bit scary. So I can see that definitely converting better. Yeah. And, and not only that, I'm hoping I, I started testing it this morning, but I've started, um, I always go for the cheapest item, but in products that are more competitive, that are more popular, I've become $5.00. I've become more of the median. I've become more of the average instead of the cheapest and, and nothing's changed. So I'm making an extra five bucks just because I'm, you know, taking, I guess, better quality pictures or, or what have you. So that's, that's cool. Sounds good. Ashley, how's it going? I mean, unmute. Good. Um, things are good. My kids are making noise. So sorry. Um, this week's been good. Amazon lost one of my shipments, so A plus Amazon. Um, but it's fine. I'm sure they'll reconcile it. They usually do. From what I hear, they'll reimburse you the value of what you sent in. So I'm hoping that that happens. Um, I also, Saturday, I had a really good garage sale day and I sent, I just stayed up till 5 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning and just did the whole thing. So that's behind me. It's just Oops, sorry. It's just all of that stuff. Um, and so I'm going to send that in. My, I'm going to have my husband when he gets home deliver that to FedEx. Hi, buddy. Um, and then eBay's been good. I got my listing value up to $9,200. So um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to, it's Q4. So I just have, I've really got to like make this happen. This is the time to strike while the iron's hot. And that's really motivating me. I'm sorry about the background noise. I will mute myself now. <laughs> Mary, quick update. Uh, yeah. So actually from last week, I finally received my Supreme um, purchase. I think I shared that last time. So I'm ready to list that. That was kind of a win. I was super excited to have that. Um, I've never owned or seen a real Supreme uh, item. So I was kind of shocked to see the quality. It was somewhat, I don't know why it's, it's a hype, right? So I received that. Um, my bookkeeping is coming along, so I'm pretty excited about that just because I can get it over with and I can be more updated to it. I don't have to focus so much on that. That was another win. Um, I did have um, a so much, somewhat of a challenge on Wednesday of last week. I sold zero items. Like, I don't know how that happened. Uh, it's been such a long time since that's happened. 
Um, I had a 200 and something dollar Wednesday, a zero dollars uh, when um, Thursday, and then uh, Friday resumed as my daily average. So I was kind of confused as to why that happened, but um, all there was left to do is continue listing. So I continued listing, and then my sales are back to uh, back now to average daily sales. Um, that two hundred dollar day had to do with one of the hard goods that I sold, which is um, kind of what I want to get into later when we talk about hard goods. It was actually um, a Halo Two figurines. They were they were sold for a hundred dollars, which is kind of shocking, but. Um, that helped with that two hundred dollar sale, but as far as the uh, Thursday, I had no idea how that how that zero sale day happened. But I'm just glad to be back on track and be back into my uh, daily sales average. Awesome. Um, I guess win for me is I'm I'm operating pretty close to zero death pile, which is awesome. I'm I'm listing pretty much everything that I get every single week. I have the capacity to do a thousand listings per week now. Um, I just need to figure out a faster way of drafting, but I have a new process where I take a picture of my item location before and after the pictures, and it makes it really easy to match it um, when I'm uploading the photos after I draft. So draft photographs, and I add this before and after so I can see the gap. Um, and most of the time I take the same number of pictures, so it's pretty quick to match. Um, I can't draft as fast as my photographer can photograph. so. That is, I need to figure out a way to make that easier um, in order to, I, I'm the bottleneck right now. My photographer is way beyond me. He was able to do 300 photographs in one day, uh, 300 items um, last week. And with, without having to spend the night, he just went home on his own after that. The first time he did 269, he had to stay over because he was so tired. So that's been awesome. Um, and I enjoy, so I I'm using the momentum from garage sale finds to go into stuff that I don't like, but the stuff I don't like is what's making me the most money because it's so consistent and I can reorder it um, from suppliers. Um, I finally was able to meet a wholesaler in person and, um, and it, it was great because it's been taking, I've been spending an hour or two a day looking for replenishables like Kevin and finally found somebody with some. So it takes a while and I hope everyone is patient when they're looking for that because of course you know, if you list a hundred of one item, it's much easier, much easier. So if you want to get into that um, way for increasing your total value, but I still like the unique stuff and I need the momentum of that to continue. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk today about hard goods. I guess I will start and just talk about some of the hard goods I have sold this year, um, which have done me really well. So I have sold this year five pieces from Thomas Kincaid. I just got lucky. Um, I knew of him because when I first started, I was selling puzzles and he makes a lot of puzzles, but I found out the puzzles are actually of his actual artwork. So I found a couple prints, those sold for over 200. And then I had a Thomas Kincaid lampshade that sold for 250 bucks, which was amazing that I paid a dollar for at a garage sale. And it was going to be free. And I just, she said, you can just have it, but I gave her the dollar that was on it anyway, because it was so fragile and so clunky and it cost $45 to ship that basically glass ball. Um, I've had good luck with selling bookends. I find those wooden ones are expensive. They're heavy. Those sold well. Also, the things that go underneath fireplaces on the sides, I've sold two sets of those things. Um, home goods, I think, is larger than uh, clothing on eBay. Home goods is the largest category. So, you know, people are selling, selling that Ray Dunn stuff. They're selling plates. Um, when I'm doing the retail arbitrage, I like to pick up the KitchenAid mixers. There's like always one at TJ Maxx or Marshalls in the clearance section I have found. It's always red. It's always like $179. they are selling for $279 on eBay or Amazon or whatever. So you get that little bit of a break. And that was my only um, Vero complaint ever was I used the picture from the, or the KitchenAid website. Cause I thought that was going to be, that was going to be okay. And it was definitely not okay. Immediately was removed because they probably have an intern scanning for their pictures. So don't steal pictures. Um, not the way to do it. They own them. So home goods has been good for me. The, the bookends have been good. Paintings have been great. They're clunky, but I think in that category, and I also found that record player I paid 28 bucks for and sold for five twenty eight. So the hard goods, there's big money. Um, I average 10 to one margin on electronics, but I do have 10% returns. 
So got to be prepared to eat those because it, um, it's going to happen. Also, the reason why I don't sell electronics anymore is because bugs live in them. So I just don't like bugs. And there's plenty of stuff to sell, so I'm not having an issue. It takes me a long time to pack them, and I don't. I hate receiving broken electronics, so I always do the floating package. So one package inside of another package, which is great, but um, with high returns. And when I think about how much time it takes me to go meet up with somebody, test it, package it, ship it, and 10% returns, I'd rather sell something that has 2% returns. It's just overall easier. And it's also not remotely replenishable. So I want to move away from that. So let's um, go in random order. Let's start with Ashley. Um, what, how, what kind of hard goods have you sold and do you think are interesting? And again, sorry, you're going to get background music with my kids. We like the kids. I, so like hard goods are my favorite things, actually. It's probably what I sell most of on Amazon. I don't know if books count as a hard good. No, not really. Um, but like uh, just this weekend, I picked up four Cricut machines and some crafting machines, popular here in Utah, and all the cartridges. And those all together sell for two thousand dollars or more. So like, but I mean, and they were, they all looked in fantastic condition. And um, I don't mind testing those. I mean, definitely, yeah, I'd, I'd like to get away from it and have a replenishable. But um, I don't. I have never sold like a crafty hard good that's like a decoration, like a. Loretta on Instagram who sells, she's just a beast and she has all those like brass bookends, fancy globes, everything like that. Um, I haven't, cause I've heard that it's, I don't know, it's, uh, it takes a long time to sell, but yeah, but on Amazon, I sell, I sell all kinds of electronics and hard goods and they have a fantastic return. Um, and really the only reason I'm doing that now is because I need that. I need my money to be 10 X to get to the next level. Like I'm not quite ready to like, I don't have enough money to spend to get those returns you're talking about, Chris, like to spend 179 and to sell it for 279 and get that small margin. So I'm trying to like, while I can 10 X my money until I have a really nice pool to then do all of that. Then I'm hoping, cause I did set up a fulfillment prep center in New Hampshire. that's going to help me with all my online orders for Amazon, which is a big relief. So like, I'm hoping that that will be my whole business model soon is just find your replenishables online that I can send to them who will then process it for Amazon. Um, was that the topic? Maybe not. Sorry. That is. That's, that's right on the money. And I think that, <laughs> that it's so much easier to find margin when the items cost more. Yes. The items $500. You can buy it for 300. That's not too hard to find with online coupons and, um, bulk deals, but finding an item that's 50 for 10 is very hard. Oh yeah. It's nearly impossible mm -hmm. or it's very saturated because people don't really want to spend a ton of money. So that's mm -hmm. actually when I shop online, that's what I go for is things that it costs a hundred dollars or more and will net me 40% or more. And that's just today I sold something for $175 that I bought for a hundred and I netted 45 on that. So like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, if I had enough money, I'll do that all day. <laughs> I'll like for those, I don't mind $45 is $45, but unfortunately I don't have, you know, all the money in the world. So there's also a buck. There's like a bucket between like 150, 150 and $350 that has low returns. There's a, there's a range in there. The, mm -hmm. the higher end definitely has returns because people, it needs to be perfect or they're not going to keep it. And then if it's, Below a certain range, like we know, the, like the most returns I think happen in the sub $20 category. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you want to make sure that that's a category that has high returns. You want to make sure, I mean, ideally be a little bit higher than that. But that's, that's, that is great. And that makes, that is a good point. So, I think I've had maybe 10 messages from people saying that credit is the number one thing you should be worried about when you're doing online business. Because when you find something that's $179 that you can sell for $300, and the margin, it's kind of scary, but you have a credit card that has $75,000 on it and you buy all of them, right? You're like, oh, so scary. And then it's fourth quarter and everyone wants it for their mom and you make 20 grand in two days, right? That's the thing that people are waiting for. That's when opportunity meets preparation. So, And that so is my scary. goal, not to like Bogart, but that is my goal. I want to like have just an enormous pile of cash to do just that because that is such an amazing opportunity that not a lot of people are doing. Cause again, it's scary. It's scary to say, I'm going to spend $40,000 this month to get 10,000 back. But like, right. 
anyway, but it's not really, if you think about it, anyway, that's all. Yeah, it is interesting. And also, it's good to to know that people that have over $5 million businesses rarely have over 10% margin. So when you factor in employees, facility, lawyers, one person tripping and you have to pay for their medical bills, all that added together is less than 10% margin. So you need to get a really big business to justify that. Um, Let's go on to Sam. What do you like selling besides clothing? Hard goods. Uh, electronics. So as you guys know, I mostly sell. Actually, I'm big on electronics. So that's one thing that I love doing. And I make a lot of, like, my profits are a lot higher than, uh, you know, when I do closing, you know, compared to electronics. And actually, like, some of my favorite stuff that I sold at on, on eBay or Amazon actually were, like, electronics. So, for example, like, there's one CPU that I sold for 1700 I shipped it uh, for first class. It was around three hours, so it was a win-win. I, I didn't get a return, so and we get a lot of that in our our business. So and we get them for so cheap. So that's that's one of the advantages that I have. We get them for way lower than you know what you would get at Goodwill or even garage sales so because we buy them in bulk and we have really good connection with small companies and we can get them from anywhere. So. That is the one advantage that I have, but at the same time, it's a headache like dealing with the returns because you're dealing with bigger margin, you know, the return. And when you ship an item, they're huge sometimes. For example, when we ship servers, they're like, they're pretty big. So when, when you get that return, it's really, yeah, I guess, you know, sometimes it gets to you, but overall, pretty much we sell everything. So like closing, sometimes I've sold toys, really big toys, the, what is it? go something like we were able to get a wholesale account with them so they send us a couple of like returned uh electronics and we sold those last christmas for a really high price so that was pretty good uh what else let me just go through my like my ebay like some of the top price they pay like most of them are uh electronics so like boards like computer boards they sell pretty well as long as you ship them in a really uh good way they they have really good profits. We buy them for like a box and sell it for over a hundred. So it's a win-win. So, yep. yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And I think, you know, with, with parts in general, all things you either sell for a lot more in parts. Um, you can take things apart. Um, I sold a vintage typewriter and then the guy told me to just ship one piece of it. So, I mean, it's just, you know, as far as it goes, everyone is looking for something different. One piece will break like the glass thing inside of a microwave sells for like half as much as the microwave, just the round plate inside because people break that part. They don't want to buy a new microwave. So all these little things, you know, everyone follows Thrift Love Sell Loretta on Instagram. She sells all kinds of stuff, crystal glass that you, you could get for free because nobody wants it. It takes up so much space. She does a little bit of homework and makes thousands of percent of margin so it's cool to look at that um this year i also sold a sled that was like eight feet long a toy vintage sled and the the original calculator which weighed 80 pounds so like it is there's so much weird stuff and neither of those were worth my time but they were both fun so i don't know i see it at a garage sale it's cheap enough i'm just curious like who's gonna want that but um i'm trying to limit my fun to just a very small percentage of it. Let's go. Um, who hasn't gone yet? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't gone yet. Um, yeah. So I was just talking, I, with this, since opening my store, it is a clothing and shoe store. So currently I don't sell hard goods. I have picked up hard goods to sell, like with the purpose of selling on Amazon or eBay. Um, but I'm a lazy shipper and I don't want to figure out how to ship things. Um, I have, so the, the background with me actually is that my grandparents used to own an antique store and they used to be buyers for antiques and they used to go around to flip flea markets and stuff like that. And I have listed things for them in the past um, on eBay before I had a store and stuff like that. So I actually have some knowledge of antiques um, and collectibles, um, but not to the point where I feel comfortable um, listing them in my store. I feel like I want to open a second store and maybe dabble in it a little bit and also try to figure out how to ship it because I've never had to ship it. Um, I've always, I only had, was the lister. 
Um, but I have flipped things locally. I have talked, to, I know I've talked about in the past flipping furniture. I have flipped furniture a ton of times locally. Um, I'm decent with a, a um, paintbrush <laughs> and a uh, spray paint. I'm like the expert spray painter. <laughs> So um, in our family, my mom, my mom made fun of my house because everything in my house was spray painted pretty much. Um, so I've done stuff like that and I, I definitely want to open a second store. In the area that I live, I actually started my eBay store with the intention of selling everything um, because I can find so many antiques and collectibles where I live, especially Western stuff. Um, that that was my intention. I just know more about clothing and I know how to ship it and that's where my wheelhouse is. So I felt comfortable with it at the time and that's what I've been doing. Um, so you guys, um, I want to like ask the panel, do you guys know, um, if I should open a second store just for antiques? Cause I know sometimes people's listing numbers, um, are like their, rank on search goes down a little bit if they're listing more of hard goods than they are of clothing if they're a clothing seller. Chris, do you have any input on that? Um, I don't I don't think it matters for the most part because people are searching for individual items. It is a little confusing though if you go to a store and there's a bunch of antique stuff. It doesn't hurt to have multiple stores. If you have multiple stores you can also test different strategies, different shipping. Uh, I want to just talk on this on the part of antiques and furniture I think the easy one of the easier things to start selling is chairs there's like such a demand and they're almost free because people don't have space even office chairs or antique chairs you can pick them up for free on the Craigslist free section or for very cheap because people don't have space and there's a huge demand any mid-century stuff any office chairs or you have utility beyond just looks and um, I think a small furniture store if you have space in front of your yard to just put some stuff i think it'd be a good good place to start because you can you make like hundreds of dollars of margin potentially um, well um the biggest actually the biggest flip that i've had before with furniture are dressers mm -hmm. people are always looking for dressers and they don't necessarily um want a dresser that matches so um, especially people that just move in, like their first thing that they want is someplace to put their clothes. So dressers have actually been in the past, um, my biggest splits for furniture and side tables. And in my area, they have like a large recycling truck that will come around and collect furniture and just junk that you put on the side. And if you know what day pickup is, start driving around your area and just pick up stuff off the side of the road. That's what I used to do. And it was great. What do you guys think about, um, let's do a quick round table on, having multiple stores for multiple things. What do you guys think? I don't personally, just because I have feedback for my one store <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to build up new feedback. It's just me being lazy, but I've heard like, I mean, I know people who have multiple stores and it works out well, probably just for organizational purposes. Like it's easier just to like have, you know, your one store has sells this and it has, you know, this kind of stuff. And I don't know, probably it's better, but I just, I don't see myself going that route really. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's just me. I have seen people that like complain that when they list a bunch of hard goods in their store and they're not listing in the clothing category that their sales in clothing has gone down a little bit. So I don't know if that's true, if anybody has tested that theory or what, um, but that's definitely something I have considered when thinking about selling it. I think the, I mean, my Husky store has everything in it and it, it's awesome. So I love that as long as you just keep feeding the beast and I, I love Ashley's terminology of waking up your eBay store. And I just think it's sleeping when you put stuff into it, everything goes up and I have had somebody buy a hair dryer and a jacket. So like it happens, people will buy multiple things. So when you have that combined shipping discount, people will look, see they can get a deal on something. And, um, you know, I think it makes more sense to have like pants, jacket, blazer, boots, socks, sports bra. That would make more sense. But it doesn't, I think it, everything stimulates everything. I don't think it, unless you just stop selling clothing completely and switch, I don't think you would get a, a, a drop. I don't, I don't know. I think I actually am under the assumption 
this is how I think of eBay. I would rather buy from a person on eBay than a company. I don't mind if you have, you're selling stuff around your house and I think I'm getting a better deal that way actually. If it's a white background, free shipping from anywhere USA and they don't even tell me where they live and it's like it's 40,000 feedback, then it's a, it's a sterile experience. It's different. It's like Amazon. Uh, so I have on, on one of my account that I have but like different items and what I do is to prevent people from, you know, leaving the stores like by having everything in a category and I have subcategories for from category to subcategory to keep people on the same. If they're looking for crow, they can just stay on that order and you can have, you know, by doing that, I haven't had any problem. Actually, my sales go, they go up sometimes because it's just when an item sells for some reason in the morning. The days goes well, like it just, it's just, it doesn't stop. But if I don't sell one item, it's just that day, it's like a struggle. So it's like having multiple items and it's like you bring in not only certain customers, but you have a lot of different customers from different places who are looking for a great deal. And eBay is a place where they go to get like deals. Not like you can buy from somewhere else with a better quality, but if you're looking for a deal, you go there. So just not for closing as well. They're looking for anything. So. Yeah, that's good. As long as, I think as long as you have your uh, category separated, like like Sam said, you still give them an ability to to go through the store and see what else they could find, right? So I think I had a customer buy um, some biking shorts and then uh, purchase a purse, which is almost like into a sporty, into a dressy, two different categories, kind of. And uh, I was kind of pleased to see that they they were looking for more than just working out or looking more than just dressing up. So I, I encourage uh, people to have everything in one store. I mean, everything would be connected, right? If you have an account, everything's, everything's connected. If something happens to your account, everything goes down. Or if something reflect, if uh, there's a feedback reflected on one item, it, it kind of reflects on your entire store. I have a question, if you guys can answer. Do you guys do, so you said, Chris, that you do a discount with multiple items, even with hard goods. So how do you do that? Like when you are doing hard goods, because I know with clothing very easily what goes in what box, you know, or what things weigh. I um, mean, I pre-weigh everything. I'm, I'm one of a few people that pre, I try to pre-box everything. So I put it all okay. together and then I'm trying to offer a discount on shipping as in like you get a few bucks off, like two bucks off for each additional item or something like that. I'm testing a bunch of them. I like the I like that idea of upselling. So I'm trying to think of getting a good, healthy mix. But categories for me, I'm going to switch to size. And then if I was going to do hard goods, I'd have to be very specific on categories like Sam. I wonder if Sam, you, do you use more than one category ever? Yes. So, so for everything, for example, for electronics, I have separate, uh, separate uh, categories, shoes. Uh, closing jeans pants then I'll go in the sub and for example for shoes if you know I don't want to miss kids shoes with the men so I have those separated as well and for women's shoes as well so everything is basically if you go to my store everything is not in one place and I have checked uh, your uh, husky store like on the other listing I think if you put everything in one category people would buy it and what I do is like I offer if someone buys four items they, they get at least 20 to uh, forty dollar discount because you if if you can ship all the items to one person you can you can make a lot of money from that and you can create a great customer and they will come back for sure like next time you know so yeah and, and, and what um, I do, sorry ahead. chris what i do with shipping now is i just do like because it's clothing if i'm already putting it in a you know medium-sized box i know i can fit a million things in there um, so I just do two dollars per item after like the first initial shipping. So it makes total sense for you to do like a discount off of shipping instead of set instead of just setting a separate price for each additional after. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely something I need to think about changing too. And there's a guy in my mastermind group that went from like seventeen thousand in sales a month to thirty five thousand in sales a month, and went from selling a thousand items to five hundred items. So he doubled his revenue and sh and did half as many total sold items by just creating basically four of each thing to max out the shipping thing, the, the shipping container of the item like Pokemon cards. He would sell a whole thing instead of individually. 
and um, board games. He'd board game. He'd put five board games together. You never, you would never think of doing that, but he would sell it as like a home evening party kit for your family. And people were like, "Yep, I want that." So they're spending you know eighty dollars instead of twenty on one game. They're buying six games or something, and then they can do UPS grounds relatively cheap. So people are using that for Amazon. They're using it for big bulk stuff. Um, and I think right now, so many people are not selling board games because they're heavier. And he's found kind of a niche. You guys can do that. So you can figure out a way to increase your average sale price um, by mixing in things. And I think you could actually bundle different hard goods that are related to families. You could do that, especially for kids. Like a, some kind of toy bundle is appealing. And it makes your thing a lot higher. So, yeah, I think I've so, done that. Done, I've sold like an Xbox with the microphone games that you can like karaoke and sing. And I mean, I had this separately, but if I put it all together, it could be a gaming experience for the karaoke lovers. And I think it did me well too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, one time, one thing I like about categories that actually the one person bought nine socks from the sock section. So that means if you have it, the socks everywhere, they're not going to look through the store right. trying to find where all the socks are, right? So basically, he bought all of them, and they were really good price because they were like graphic, Nike. I think he's doing eBay to Amazon foot because I can tell they were very expensive on Amazon. But I, I was getting so I did that, and I think the get- category works pretty well. Yeah. I'm just going to shout out Prince, who's not on the call, who loves retail arbitrage. Somebody in my group posted um, an item too cheap, and Prince bought it. It means like, ah, oh, I should have just sold it to him directly if he's going to do that. But yeah, it's important to look at the, look at the, um, the model on eBay. Like people are doing eBay to eBay, eBay to uh, Amazon, but never Amazon to eBay, really. That doesn't really exist. But eBay to Amazon all day. If you know what you're selling and your niche, especially with hard goods because people don't know what they have, you could do it. And one of the big things that I've noticed is, is ink. People find a lot of ink and when you post it, you post it the wrong price, it's going to sell in 10 seconds because some robot will find it. So be careful when you're pricing stuff, the hard goods that has a high rank on Amazon, you can scan it and look as you're buying it. If the rank's really good, don't sell for cheap. You don't have to. It'll sell fast. Um, only go with Holly. Hard goods. All right. Uh, while you were talking, it reminded me that I sold six cents of chairs this week that are like 12 bucks for all six or 160. So that probably should have been my success. And uh, super kudos to mid century. He sold it to a guy who is an upholsterer and he's going to um, put in some work himself and then make a profit. So everybody wins. Um, so I had picked out vintage cameras and, um, and then plush to talk about but I'm gonna switch it up to vintage cameras and video games because video games have made me the most money percent and speed. You're talking about selling ink and it selling in just like a matter of seconds reminded me. Anything Mario sells crazy fast and I never would have like thought, oh, I'll go looking for video games, but I just happened to be in my thrift store early one morning they put out like six and I think those six, they're $1.39 a piece and uh, they made me over a hundred dollars within like 48 hours. So that's insane. And I really, and it's just a little thing. You just take a little picture of the front, maybe the back and uh, they buy it and you ship it. So love video games. And then um, vintage cameras, which I got into because I happened to be, in a goodwill again, I guess this is how it happens. Like I don't go out looking for a new area. I see a thing, I say, oh, that's interesting. And then I pull up my app and start doing my research. So um, I pulled up and it was, it's Nim Soul, N-I-M-S-O-L, 3D camera. And it was um, in the box from 1982. And it had, it has a crazy following. So I thought, I definitely want to know more about vintage cameras. Um, Oh yeah, so the purchase price there was six ninety nine, and it ended up selling for several thousand. I think it's back in my Instagram. I forget exactly how much, but it made me say, "Okay, well, let me go into vintage cameras. Um, I'll go into solds. I'll sort by highest. 
then I'll also sort by like a mid-range price and the highest of that, so like things that are selling at 75, because those are things I'm gonna more likely find. And what I found is that, uh, well, that was a good one, but whenever I'm looking for vintage cameras, like I'm scrolling Craigslist or off route, I want things that kind of, I can't think, I don't know what they're called, but they kind of look like an accordion. I want those. Um, I want those every time. Most people, I mean, they're pointless. Maybe someone finds them in an old uh, storage unit or something, but you definitely want those every time. Uh, just look up vintage camera. It would be the kind that you put, um, they put like a film in it and they do the like uh, big light flash and those are great. So anyways, I found this item. It sold for me, but it also opened up like uh, an avenue to research and now I have things I look for in that category at the top of the dome every time. No, I think that that's cool. Anything vintage is super hot and cameras, people get really into them and it's a really good category to be in, um, especially since le lenses sell for crazy amounts of money and certain things are rare and people take care of them. And also a lot of camera stuff is never used. Yeah. People will buy it and then really not use it at all. Um, yeah, even like out of the box, but just not that used. Because I mean, we all do that even with new technology now, except for our phones. Like you get it. I remember you don't used to always have to have my mom would need like the newest video camera, but now I own those two video cameras. One I sold on eBay, but they didn't get used. They're in good condition. I feel like as a millennial, I don't have anything that I haven't opened. When I go garage selling, I find so much brand new stuff and I'm, I don't buy things I don't open and use immediately, I feel like. Yeah, I don't. Right, do you guys have a lot of new tag stuff? No. But when you're younger, I feel like we think like two, three times before we make a purchase. That means we're going to use it or need it immediately. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I, I see a lot of new stuff and I'm like wondering why they bought it. Why wasn't it open? What was my mind? <laughs> I know. And then I'm I like, I rarely buy anything new, so there you go. <laughs> I, I just I buy things myself in the thrift store. So I'm like throwing away the packaging as I'm I'm like opening it on the way back from the store to my car, using it. Uh, I'm not gonna return it because I want to use it. And yeah. Stuff these days is such crappy quality. I'm not expecting it to last very long either. Like, there's no high quality stuff really. Like, vintage anything, it's built better. You can just tell once you start practicing buying stuff, you can feel the quality is better. It's heavier. Um, there's way more warranty, serial numbers, books and stuff with it. A lot of new electronics now, you get one little piece of pamphlet on how to use it. And They're also um, mostly made in the U.S. or like different type of countries that are not China, Taiwan. Right. Yeah, it's, not, it's definitely internally made domestic cool stuff. So uh, I want to get into, does anybody, or Mary, do you want to talk about hard goods? Well, let's just get a, like a quick list just so sure. you get an idea. Uh, discats, right? We talked about floppy disks. Discats, if you find them in bulk, they usually do very well on Amazon. But if you, you don't feel like doing Amazon, uh, they're good for eBay too. Floppy disks. I'm surprised to see that yearbooks have been selling. Um, they sell for over 30 bucks sometimes. Some uh, are highly sought out because they're celebrities who were, you know, attended that school or that high school or that college. So yearbooks scrapbooks personal scrapbooks i just sold one it was like 36 dollars uh, plus shipping i was it was just somebody's old grad night 1970s scrapbook that was kind of cool um that one wednesday sale that i had was the um, master chief um from the halo 2 figurines that was kind of crazy uh vhs discs um i also see a movie series like people that collect a movie like movie collectors like Alfred uh, Hitchcock movies, big um, Netflix shows or like shows that were popular in, in some time, like Nip and Nip Cut, something like that. Uh, like Sex in the City type yeah. of stuff that you see on there. But um, if they're all completely or new or sealed or in good condition, they sometimes just sell well. Um, calculators, I think the most common stuff that I usually pick up. Apple TVs are good. Um, one of my keyboards just um, the tab button broke, so I kind of did a little bit of comps, and I saw that people sell the actual keyboard like key by key. They sell it for like five dollars, like whatever key you want. I thought that was kind of cool. 
So if you can find any type of edible product, we know that that goes fast. Um, and then I found this random like walking dog. I think sometimes when people are looking for uh, pet supplies or pet things, um, they're usually high priced. Like I found a walking dog that attachment that attaches to your bike. That was about sixty dollars too. Wow! And again, that was brand new. Brand new tags, like I don't know how I found that at a yard sale. So that was pretty good. I guess just scanning things or you know typing things out and seeing if if they're of any value. You think maybe it looks like good quality. Maybe it might be worth something. That's that's important to realize too. Certain categories have really high pricing, like anything baby related, pet related. Like on Shark Tank, you see that lady that made a pet backpack, and they they were guessing, oh, do you sell them for fifteen twenty bucks? She's like eighty to a hundred, and they're like, what? How do you sell a pet backpack for that much? But that's what they go for. People love their pets, so <laughs> and they pay the, the the cribs, the stroller, everything. Yeah. The strollers, the um leashes crates sell for a lot of money and crates are very light they're bulky but they, they don't they weigh like under three pounds so like that's something that um, you could send ground very cheap so don't pass on crates um, when i went to the closest retail arbitrage to where i live is pet uh pet petco and i went in there and i asked the lady what did amazon people buy and they say anything to do with odor removal um if we have a discount they'll clear the rack anything related to crates um, anything, any kind of pet food, they'll, they'll arbitrage. So because they, there's certain dates, like they start panicking around six months before it expires and Amazon won't let you send in before 90 days or something like that. So I don't know the exact rules, but pets, one of those categories where you're not gated in, most people aren't. So you can start sending in stuff. Um, I like pet stuff. It's price insensitive. Basically people love their pets. They want it. Um, they will buy it. That's crazy. I, my mom, my mom pays four hundred dollars to get her t her uh, dog's teeth cleaned. Yeah, see. <laughs> so is that like your baby now? We we may want to shut this down and go in the pet dentistry. So <laughs> that is like crazy expensive, and that person's probably very busy. So very good. So let's talk about what we want to work on in this next week, and um, let's start with Sam. Uh, so. Uh, Next week, I'll be working on mostly uh, trying to ship out Amazon stuff because Q4 is coming up. And what I did was I tried to clear out a lot of games from my EBA store to Amazon because they weren't, I put them on there like for three months and they're not selling. But when I checked on Amazon, they have really good ranking. So I literally move every video game that I wasn't restricted on. So I would be sending those. And mostly I'll be focusing on uh Amazon, but at the same time, I'll try to keep my store going by listing, you know, a couple of items on there. So, yeah. Awesome. Holly? Um, I need everything in my uh, back stock photographed this week. So I just did like 60 shoes today, cleaning and photographing them. And I need like 100 item clothing items uh, a day at least done. And that shouldn't be hard. I just need to make sure I'm up at a certain time and devote the, the time to it. Laura? Um, when I get back, I'm going to, um, I have a bunch of bags that I need to list. I'm trying, I'm trying to get into handbags a little more. Um, and I want to start making some contacts at some local consignments to maybe um, like flip up some more higher end things in my store and I'm still doing auctions. I, ha I still have like four to 500 auctions running to try to get rid of old, like dead inventory that I just don't want in my store anymore. Um, I'm going to try to, to list higher end items in my store now. Okay. Mary. Um, at the moment, I think I'm still working on bookkeeping. I'm getting closer to being up to date. Um, I have a goal to hit a um, thousand by the end of this year. So I'm, um, I have about 14 weeks to go and I just want to make sure that I'm on top or above uh, the daily uh, listings and um, kind of keep the momentum going. I know this last day that I had no sales kind of shocked me. So I definitely don't want to feel like that again. So I have to just keep going. You said a thousand by the end of the year? By the end of the year. I mean, that's minimum. Hopefully I can over exceed that. Okay. For me, I'm trying to work on a list 20 shoes a day. Um, goal the clothing i can 
I can crush now with the photographer. All I have to do is draft. He takes all the photographs. Shoes, though, take a little bit more time, and I really want to get into it. I'm really enjoying um, selling boots. Um, everything to do with, with shoes I'm loving. And I, I also uh, am trying to get a relationship with some cobblers because I don't want to really clean any shoes ever again, but I don't have a cobbler connect. But I do have, since I'm washing all clothing now, a professional cleaner. So I'm going to have all my clothing not only um, washed, but, but um, laundered and ironed. So for I can do either, I think, around 80 cents an item. So I think I can charge at least a dollar more if all of my clothing items look perfect. So that's something that I'm going to consider doing. And if it's not worth cleaning, it's not worth buying. So I'm going to go in there. And something like that annoys me as an example for men's clothing I think one of the highest quality shirts is Thomas Dean. They are really good quality shirts. They look amazing. They fit well um, for not like normally slim fit. They're for bigger, bigger guys, but they sell horribly. So it's important to realize like, even though some stuff is really, really high quality, um, it's not good. So like, yeah, anyway, I'm just focusing on being more specific. It's not just the brand. So now I'm being way more conscious with, um, style to give you an idea i went sourcing with a guy which i never do because i never source with people who buy the exact same thing as me um, but this guy was older he knew he knew style to the max women and men's clothing he was showing me a certain brand certain styles don't sell well, how certain like he picks pattern first all the like seasoned people that i know know how to do that they pick the current style pattern um and i that's a skill it takes time and since everything recycles they just are current with what's going on right now. So they're current, they go look, they shop. That guy was a lot more specific than me. His sell-through rate's much faster than mine. Um, and he, yeah. So I was a little scared at first because I thought he was gonna steal my thunder, but exactly the opposite. So, cause he's so picky that he's not picking up much stuff. So you gotta really go in there and and uh, look. If you, if you pick up 10 items that make $20, it's exactly the same as 20 items that make $10. Um, it's pretty much the same capital. So for me, I want to get in the habit of, of uh, listing shoes. But go ahead, Laura. That's the exact same idea. That's why I want to list a little bit more higher end. And I found a few um, consignment shops. You know, obviously my price of goods will go up a little bit. Um, you know, I usually get things pretty dirt cheap. But I, I feel like I know. Um, I try to keep up to date with what's current um, in fashion and my current inventory that I've listed in the past month has sold at a like I would say about three times faster rate than the rest of my store so once I started being more intentional about my um, my shopping and what I'm picking up it's it's really made all the difference so I 100% agree with everything you just said I just want to make one more point I've been talking to a lot of people who have been selling for a long time and they don't have low average cost like it's like high way higher than you think it's like they spend between 10 and 30 an item and you're like oh i would never pay 10 to 30 when it's like you look at their store and they're they're doing 30 grand 40 grand a month because all their items sell much faster because if you just think about it the demand they're not buying stuff for 10 that can sell for 20 they're buying stuff for 10 that can sell for 40 or 50 or paying 30 for something that sells for 100 when you get into that realm it's less competitive because most people have a limited budget if you have a hundred bucks it's feels weird buying one item and going home <laughs> right when you could have bought a hundred pieces of items but then the person 100 that sells it for 300 literally has 300 bucks if he sells or he or she sells that item so would you say that's the long tail items that he's speaking of or no not necessarily no no, um, I actually have that model for, for Amazon. I buy uh, like more expensive items that sell yeah. for, I mean, I pay like a hundred dollars for right. 300, 400. And, well, that gentleman's a 60 day turn. So oh. he's looking for, that's pretty fast. That's really good. Yeah. So he's looking for a 60 day turn. Um, I've also, people who spend over a hundred dollars are usually looking for a 30 day turn. When you're spending that much money, you want your money back. Yeah. Um, but ultimately I want to, I almost think it, that it's um, equally risky to spend more to get faster 
versus lower risk money wise that sells longer? I, I feel like that's a different clientele though. It may not be. It is it's different. And I, you know, people who are buying a $600 camera, it's just yeah. different. You know, and they're looking for a deal, so they pay five. That person is totally different than, like, you know, I sold a lot of men's clothing that I feel like is a necessity. Almost, you know, my when I first started, all the clothes I was buying, not one of them was giftable. It was just something that people would buy because they need it. You know, when you get into the higher range, people are buying it as a gift. They're buying it for a present. I don't know, it's the same thing. They're buying it, like, um, <laughs> as a reward, maybe, for themselves. And yeah. so it's, it's different. And then people will spend up on stuff they care about. Um, originally, I was thinking nostalgia and necessities. But now I don't want to sell necessities. I want to sell stuff people want because it's less price insensitive. Stuff that people need. It's such a commodity. You know, as an example, selling a Banana Republic shirt, there's like zero sexiness about it. It's like you just need a shirt for work. You know, they, they, they haven't made a $350 Banana Republic button down shirt. That doesn't exist. You know, but if you get a Robert Graham one that's all crazy and it has, you know, skulls and dancing pandas on it and you're going to wear it to an event, you're going to spend up because that's cool. So I'd rather have a store of that um, because someone will pay more for what they want. But selling stuff that people, people need is tough unless you're Sam you're potentially selling a replacement part that someone needs and there's no supply. Actually, that's the point. It, it's okay if it's a necessity if there's no supply. Not everybody has it, like a Banana Republic shirt. There's something like 24,000 used ones available in every size. Like that's very challenging to pick one up. Uh, hey, Chris, what you said about buying expensive stuff at a garage sale. So what I do is if I spot something that I want to buy really, but but what I do is I use this trick. Like I try to get a stuff that are not, that are that cost less. So basically when I do a bundle, I might get a return from one item or by, by buying two or three items, just getting a return back on that one. So by doing that, I always bring the price lower than the original price. And if you buy more items, they are like most happy, happy, you know, to do a discount on that on whatever the item is. So There's a guy in the group that his wife says that, um, his budget is based, holy crap, um, there's 91,000 Banana Republic items. So um, as far as the, um, the, his wife said, if you don't get your inventory money back in two weeks, then you don't get the garage sale. But if you do get it back in two weeks, you don't have a limit. I'm okay with, and you don't have to, you just have to get the original money you spent back within two weeks. And the rest of it, we can sit on long tail, whatever <laughs> that's like you want. My boyfriend. But I was like, that's a cool rule. And I, I don't know if I want to be married to her, but that's cool. <laughs> that's a cool rule. Because then you're forced to find that one home run that pays for everything. So you're just like, what else is in your house? Do you have any cool jewelry? Or where's that bike rack that you want to sell me? Or those old toys? Get that out here so I can get it. So if you want me to buy your junk, let me get your gold, you know? I like that. Hey, Chris, I don't know if you, you guys remember like two weeks ago, I bought a lot of stuff on and a lot like shoes, clothing, all that. Yeah. I already made my, my money back by two items already. Yeah. Two items. So I already made all that money back. So that was, yeah. <laughs> I bought those, um, those graphic novels and I bought one that sold for $65. The whole thing only cost 10 for all the books. So it's like now you go use it to go get something else and books. I cannot believe I've been sleeping on books. It's like uh, I was, I got turned off when I bought the comic books. I only made a little bit of money, but books are, they're so fast to list. You can list a hundred in a day, no, like in a couple hours actually by yourself on Amazon and eBay. It's faster to, to post on two platforms than it is to just sell other kinds of other things. So pretty remarkable. Um, and then you can use Amazon to fulfill stuff. A lot of people sell stuff on Amazon and then have, the Amazon Fulfillment Center send it in using a program like Jail Lister or something. So it's cool when you guys get there and, and the replenishables. But um, let's go with final thoughts. Anybody have anything else to share this week? And then tell people where they can find you. Why don't we start with Sam? Uh, they can find me on Instagram, OSS Empire, YouTube channel, OSS Empire. So yeah. Sounds good. Holly? Um, final thought you mentioning sourcing with that guy. Um, we all shop in different places, those places are full of um, hoarders who are shopping.
thing not to sell and to keep it. Make friends with them. They have knowledge, like that guy you were just talking about. Um, they also, I've made friends with a couple who have said, you know, maybe one day you could come to my house and I might sell you some stuff. Make friends with people who are doing things a little differently around you all the time. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at love G. Perfect. Laura? Um, yeah, my final thought is that I lied. My goal is to get my husband an eBay store to sell sports collectibles because he would <laughs> rock that in a heartbeat. Um, and you can find me, I'm Thrifty Boss Babe on YouTube as well as Instagram. Sounds good, Mary. Um, for her, uh, final thoughts here, let's just say if you're not into hard goods, just give it a shot. I feel like we're often afraid to try new things. And, um, I think if you start looking things up around you, you'll, you'll soon realize that some things are worth more than you think. So give it a shot. Why not? And where can people yeah. find you? You can find me at Feel Good Finds with the Z on Instagram. Uh, come say hi, send me a comment. Don't be a stranger. Um, my final thought is that you guys all know Hustle B on Instagram. He had his account suspended, oh, yeah. um, but he got it back. So I think it's important for everyone to realize, get your community together, get people to respond, um, see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of us that are online together on Instagram and YouTube, and we know a lot of people. So reach out uh, when you're having an issue, reach out to people. Hopefully we can all work together to keep our community nice and healthy. And um, I'm glad I got his account back. And if you guys have any questions, email uh, me at 10kontheBay at gmail.com and look for me on Instagram as well. And thanks again. We'll see you guys next week.